I'm like, what is your plan? And he's like, we haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do about the kids yet. But he told me, he's like, Colorado's a 50-50 state and she's okay with everything 50-50. Like, he said that she was, like, on board with this because she wanted it too. Like, she was checked out of this relationship. So that was, like, how he made this sound. That it was, like, a very, like, kosher, we're done kind of thing. Did and you ever give him, like, books or articles or anything to read about saving your marriage did you ever provide anything to him like that about saving his marriage yeah like how to recover a marriage or how to save your marriage or, you know there's there's all sorts of publications and no. books out there no but i did tell him and i don't know if i did this through text or phone that will be something you guys will i'm sure figure out um but i would tell i told him a few times like i think that you should take the time to read some articles uh about um what <laughs> separation does to kids you know, and I told him, I said, when my parents separated, we were literally like three and five. We were almost the exact same age as these little girls. And I told him, I said, you know, Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. I've previously made the point that while crimes seem to be executed with an attitude of begin with the end in mind and may seem to us to be quite cleverly executed and that a lot of forethought goes into them, the reality is that they are often ill-conceived rush jobs committed at the last moment. Had the criminal given himself more time to think about what he's about to do, he likely wouldn't do it or would do it differently. The Chris Watts case is a good example of this. If he'd rushed into the pregnancy and then clumsily attempted to undo the pregnancy using oxy, then what he was about to do on the Monday morning was a last-ditch attempt at the very last moment to fix things, as he put it. But it was basically an escalation of what he'd done in the rush to undo the pregnancy. From a criminal psychology perspective, it's interesting to see how the perpetrator seems to suddenly find himself in an impossible situation, it's a situation of their own making, but of course they don't see it that way. All they see is how to try to get out of it. Crimes are committed to escape accountability. Just as in the aftermath, we see this very practiced effort at avoiding accountability for what they've just done. But how does this play out in practice? The Kessinger tapes provide fascinating insight into some of these dynamics. If we're able to put aside our disgust and revulsion directed at the mistress and take note of what she's actually saying, then we're able to determine some of these dynamics. So, for example, when she told investigators that Watts told her, I am the guy trying to save the marriage and she doesn't want it. Do you believe Watts was trying to save his marriage? So he, at this time, is telling you that yeah, I am the guy trying to save the marriage and she doesn't want it. That's what he told me. That's what he told me. So, okay. um, and he, yeah. And then he was like, she doesn't want it, so I'm not going to do it. And then it was like, we're filing for divorce, we're selling the house. And this was like all as soon as they were coming back from North Carolina, like boom, 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 boom. Would you recall when he gets back from North Carolina? No, I don't even know how long he was out there. I know it was like less than two weeks and more than one. Okay. So to us it may seem pretty obvious that Watts wasn't trying to save his marriage, right? But if you were in Kissinger's position and you have the situation where he goes to North Carolina, don't you think that is giving this impression that he is? His family have been in North Carolina for five weeks and then he goes there for one week. Don't you think that is looking like, if you, his mistress, that he's trying to save his marriage. Wouldn't you make that assumption? And of course, this had been planned far in advance, the trip to North Carolina. So I think he used this inversion in order to make himself look like the innocent party, to make himself look like the good guy. Not only that, to make him appear more attractive to Kessinger as a loyal, committed partner, who is nevertheless neglected and mistreated by his spouse, while assuring her of this outcome that the marriage isn't going to work, the marriage isn't going to be there. And of course, he can't really assure her of that, given what is actually happening. 
It's tragically ironic that he sketches himself this way, when in reality he was prepared to murder his family in order to make sure there was absolutely no way it was saved. In other words, he did what he did to do the opposite of saving his marriage or his family. In his mind, the transaction was crystal clear. In order to continue his affair with his mistress, his family had to be gone. They had to disappear. He couldn't have both. And he was convinced in his heart that he wanted Kessinger, and so he no longer wanted his wife or his children. Another thing that placed Watts in a bind was postponing the inevitable, by assuring Kessinger that as soon as Shannon came back from North Carolina, the divorce would be finalized and they'd sell the house, Watts locked himself into a timeline that Kessinger no doubt took note of and was counting down. To begin with, Watts may have meant that the divorce would merely play out after her return from North Carolina, and perhaps that morphed into as soon as she gets back, they would sort it out, which eventually became the day she got back. So consider this from Kessinger's perspective. She has the impression Shanann is already out of the picture for several weeks. Then everyone arrives back and Shanann leaves for a weekend without the kids. And then she's misled to believe Shanann has left a third time. How is she supposed to know which of the three disappearances are the real ones? Especially when she's been misled to believe that Shanann's leaving anyway. And she's constantly leaving. I don't remember. So he, was, he comes back early August. Would that be fair? Oh, yeah. It was definitely like in the first two weeks somewhere. All right. Probably the second week of August at some point in that. I don't remember when. Does his wife come back with him at that time? Or does yeah, they all came back. They all come back at the same they time. They all came back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so he, he continues to just, you know, tell me that this is like what he wants. And, and so I took the time, and you will see that in the text too, where I like, like they're, like, I found this apartment. It was perfect. It was so cute. I was like, it's in your price range. It's, like, six miles from the gym. It's 23 miles from work. I'm like, you know, it's super close to Frederick. It's going to be by your kid's school. Like, this is this is the spot, you know. And, and, and I told him, I was like, I'll keep looking for more places. And he's like, well, there's some that I want to go see, too. And he actually had me thinking that he was going to go look at these places this week. Before all okay, this so this is fairly recent then. Ooh, if we're this talking, just happened, like in the he's going to go weeks. look at apartments. He wanted me to go during, with them. When you say this week, are you saying like this? Monday this was the thirteenth. This timeline of going to look at apartments on the thirteenth was also putting pressure and urgency on Watts to make sure his family weren't around by then. One thing Kessinger doesn't acknowledge here is that she gave him a key to her apartment during the week prior. I think it was the Wednesday after they got back, and he took this as a very serious sign that their relationship was now at a serious level, and he realized he really wanted to keep it that way. If you go through the transcript and you search for the word key, key comes up quite a few times where she talks about giving a key to Jim, right, her friend Jim. And so she's obviously thinking about the the idea of giving a key to someone, but she clearly seems to withhold this information. And it comes out in Cheryl and Cadle's book, Letters from Christopher. I'm going to read an excerpt from there. Quote, When he returned from Colorado, he went to Nikki's using his work truck. That day, Nikki gave him a key to her place. She withheld from the FBI that she ever gave him a key to her house. It told him that she was ready to take the next step forward in their relationship. So he told her he was moving forward with a separation. He promised Nikki his relationship with Shanann was going to end even though he had not yet talked to Shanann about the separation. Christopher realized that day, and I think it's not the day of the key, but the day of the uh, when he received the book from Shanann about Hold Me Tight, He realized that day that he could not have Nikki and his family at the same time. It was the first time he realized it. And it was now time to get rid of what was standing in the way of his relationship with with Kessinger. That's obviously an excerpt from Letters from Christopher by Sherilyn Cadle. But what we get out of this is how one lie leads to another lie leads to another lie. And suddenly you're in a bind. And how do you now allow one reality to 
exist when there's a counter reality that's out there, somebody else knowing things in a totally different way, and that that person is now going to be a threat to this other reality. What does one then do about that? Well, yeah, you can see exactly how that takes place. In the next episode, I'm going to be dealing with how and why Kessinger may have believed the separation was actually likely and was likely happening. We're just going to look at it from her perspective, how uh, certain signs, either she should have known better or um, she was misled to believe certain things based on what was happening, and why, in other words, how credible was her perception that he was getting separated. So we're going to look at that in the next episode. If you want to catch that episode, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, like, share, leave a comment, and I'll see you guys next time.